Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends, get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Ancient words, ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Ancient words, ever true. Changing me and changing you. We have come with open heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Lord, we come before your words this day, the ancient words, the words that brings life, the words that brings joy. We ask that this day, as the word of God comes to us, we will receive life and joy in us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. There is power in the Word of God. And I bring you greetings on this fateful Sunday, the 19th uh, of September, 2021. It is a great joy to be in God's presence. It is a great joy to be loved of God and to be brought before Him to listen to His Word and also be blessed. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, the Word of God says, For the Word of God is living or active and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword. And may this Word bring life to us today, this very Sunday, in the mighty name of Jesus. The topic is the first and great commandment. The first and great commandment. And the text is Matthew chapter 22 from verse 34 to 40. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ as recorded by St. Matthew chapter 22 from verse 34 to 40. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we look at the Daily Fountain devotional guide, we, we have wonderful lessons to draw from this devotional guide. I want to thank the Lord so much for great men and women that God has used across of Nigeria to bring these guidelines to us, beginning with the primate of this church. It's so inspired, I wish to encourage all of us to um, study through our daily devotion, which is Daily Fountain. It's a wonderful guide, so inspired. The first and great commandment. The Pharisees should have been delighted with Jesus' answer to their greatest enemy, the Sadducees. But they were not. Hence, one of them, fast in the law, came testing Jesus' attitude to the law. This is because the Pharisees had classified over 600 laws. And since it was too hard to obey all the laws, they tried to distinguish the more relevant ones. 
from the irrelevant. Hence the question, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? You can imagine where people have about 600 laws to keep. Who can ever do that? The first lesson is the weakness of man in keeping laws. Thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ, thanks to his death and resurrection that brought new life to us, new law introduced in us that gives us the desire, the freedom to serve the Lord without clinging so much on the law, doing this, keeping this, and keeping that. That loving the Lord removes so much burden from the believer, from the child of God, the love for the Lord. We sympathize with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, people who did their best to keep these laws. But we know how difficult it can be. Thank God for the new law introduced in us and established in our hearts, the law of love. Then the reply from Jesus, which was the summary of the first parts of the law, to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the great commandment. As we have in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. Jesus' response was apt, profound, and exceedingly powerful. For he took the expert in law from the area of achievement, which he may have credentials of fulfillment, to that of attitude, where he cannot boast of fulfillment. Nobody has ever loved God with all his being. So nobody can, nobody by strength can fulfill this commandment. Hence no one can have eternal life and have a place in the kingdom of God by personal efforts. By personal effort. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, scripture tells us that we are saved by grace. That's not by our works, by grace, so that no man should boast. No man. Salvation is by grace, it's not by works, it's not by the rituals. It's not by the ceremonies. Not even the things we do in our churches, the titles we bear. Salvation is by grace. We must receive salvation by grace. Not by the things you have paid for. Not by the things you have sponsored in the church. Not by the works of philanthropy. These acts, these works are excellent. Oh, we need church membership. We need philanthropic work. We need donors. We need the ceremonies. We need the activities in our churches to be able to put things together. Oh, we need the titles. We need them. But by themselves, they are not salvation. They do not bring salvation. It is our simple faith in the Lord Jesus Christ through His grace that we are saved. We are given new life. We are transformed. We are adopted as God's own children. Not by the works of the law, but by simple faith in Christ Jesus. Our dear Father who has spent so many years in the church, our dear mother who has spent so many years in the church, I want to respectfully ask you this morning, this Sunday morning, do you know Jesus? Are you born again? Has your life been transformed? Do you enjoy the salvation that the Lord has given us? The relationship we enjoy with God, our Father, by simply asking him to come into your life and change your life after confessing your sins. By simply maintaining a peace with God's own people through the study of God's word and fellowship. It's by grace. It's not by works. If we are to have a place in God's kingdom, 
It will be due to the unmerited grace of God for sinners who could never make it by themselves. It is so obvious that we wouldn't have made it to heaven if not for the grace of God. Not by, even by the works of charity. It is by God's own grace, the unmerited favor, the death of Jesus, his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. It is by this same death, this same sacrifice, that the stinking wretched sinner is brought to the Lord, dusted, cleaned up, and given a microphone to stand before God's people to speak. Of whom I am the chief. By God's grace, we are what we are today. It is by God's grace that one who has been struggling over some secret, secret sins is brought to a platform on a stone where God has given him victory over sin. It is by God's grace that we are doing the things we are doing in our church for people to be able to see new life. It is by grace that you can trust God to change the difficult man in the church, difficult man in the community, difficult man in our nation. It is by God's grace, by God's grace. We see, believe God in what he is capable of doing in the life of those who come to him. And we pray that that will also be accomplished in your life. Love in the passage is a summary of all the laws. Love for God and love for your neighbor, which is a very big message to us as Christians in our country today, and also a very big message to the Nigerian nation. A message of love is what we need. Love is what we need to practice. Where is all this hatred coming from? We must ask ourselves as Nigerians. Or these head speeches, or these killings, or the bloodshed, or the wickedness, or the atrocities. Where are they coming from? The root of wickedness. As we look into our nation, Nigeria, look at the future of our children, the next generation, with the Lord Jesus Taris. We must pursue love. We must ask God to establish his love in our hearts. In our various communities, in our various churches, in our various centers. Even in the family. Ask God for love. Love will always win. In every situation, love will always win. Ask God for love in your heart today. Even towards your enemy. It's difficult to love an enemy, but ask God for love. I introduce you to Jesus who alone can establish his love in our hearts. Shall we pray? Precious Father, we thank you again for this moment and give you all the glory and all the praise for your faithfulness. You sent your son Jesus to die on the cross of Calvary for us that we might be saved through faith, through your grace. Establish this love in our hearts. And help us to live for you. Help us to love you more and more. Help us to love our neighbors. Save Nigeria, O oh God. Destroy roots of wickedness in our nation. Destroy roots of evil in our nation. May love reign in Nigeria. May unity reign in Nigeria. Nigeria, it is well with you. Nigeria, you will never sink. You will never get drowned. Nigeria, you will never collapse. We speak to you, Nigeria. You will not collapse. Our children will see a better nation. We, in our own time, will see a better nation. Father, please give us good leaders, sensible, responsible, God-fearing leaders in our nation. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. 
Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.